Hi guys, today we're going to be building a Bossman RTMR fuse box for your car. The model that I'm going to be using today has two buses. It's able to fit up to five relays and ten fuses. Each side has an internal bus bar capable of 80 amps. Um, for our purpose today, we're going to be using the fuse side as our hot and the relay side as our negative, the bus posts I'm talking about. So before we get started on any wiring, we're going to want to insert cavity plugs. Uh, this is a weatherproof box, so to keep it all weatherproof, we're going to need these uh, weather seal cavity plugs. Uh, you're going to want to insert them all the way down the middle lane for the relays uh, because we're not going to be using that pin at all on the fuse box. So the first wiring step is we're going to be plugging in our signal wires. This is what's going to tell our relay to turn on. And we're going to need five of those. What we're going to need is uh, some 18 gauge wire, any color that you would like. We're going to need some uh, 18 gauge terminals and uh, some green cable seals as well as a T18 crimper. So once you have your wire cut, you want to slip on your cable seal. I cut uh, five strips, 18 inches, and then you're going to slip on your terminal to get an idea of where you need to strip your wire. Make a mark on your wire. And then you can get your stripping tool and strip it. The reason why I use the 16 gauge mark on my 18 gauge wire is because it's GXL wire and the wall is a little bit thicker than TXL wire. So you're going to slide your cable seal up uh, one more time before you crimp anything. You're going to take a look at how it fits and then you can slide the terminal into your crimping tool and squeeze down firmly. Once you've made your crimp, it's a good idea to give it an inspection to make sure it folded over properly. And we are using uh, the number three spot for the initial crimp. Now you're going to make your cable seal crimp and we're going to use the five slot. Um, for every single cable seal in this video, we're going to be using the five slot on the T18 crimper. So once you got that all crimped up, give her a good pull, make sure she's uh, tight, and we can move on to the next step. So you should have your five wires made up by now. There should be a terminal crimped on each end of each wire, but only on one end. Uh, and you can go ahead and start inserting this into your Busman RTMR. You're going to want to insert in every second terminal because that's where the relay pin is. And the process is pretty straightforward. If it's not going in, uh, flip it around. You shouldn't have to force it to go in at all. So now we're going to wrap these wires up. We're going to need some uh, heat shrink, heat gun. So now we're going to wrap these wires up. We're going to need some heat shrink. I have some split loom, a uh, heat gun, and some scissors. So you want to find a decent spot where you're going to throw the heat shrink uh, 
kind of roughly measure it out how much you want. I used about an inch and a half. String out your wires and you could throw your loom on. Make sure you leave a little extra at the end of the loom so that you can uh, do whatever you want with that end. Uh, personally I'm going to put a connector on, a six point connector and plug everything in that way. The split loom stuff is pretty easy to work with. You just, it's straightforward. Split it open and uh, you wrap it around the wire. Once you got it on, you want to slide it down a little bit. Make sure she's fairly close and it keeps your wires tight. Uh, slide down the heat shrink and go ahead and heat it up with a heat gun. Uh, just be careful with the cheap split loom stuff. If uh, you put too much heat on it from a heat gun, it's going to melt. So now that we got our signal wires in, we're going to want to plug in some jumper wires to go from the fuses to the relays. So we're going to need some 10 gauge wire, some blue cable seals, some 10 gauge uh, tangless 280 series pins. So we're going to start out by making five wires. We're going to measure it at three and a half inches. Cut them, slip on our cable seals. So to connect this terminal, we're going to be using two separate crimpers. We're going to be using a T11 crimper to crimp the wire and the T18 crimper on the 5 setting to crimp the cable seal like every other cable seal in this video. Same thing as last time, you're going to slip the terminal on the wire with a little test fit. You kind of want to figure out where you got to strip your wire. You can go ahead and strip it now. Slide your cable seal up. And you can crimp on your 280 series terminal. We're going to be using the B setting or the 2024 and the five setting on the T18 crimper. So throw your terminal on, get your terminal in position and put the terminal in the B position, the 20 to 24 mark on these T11 crimpers. Squeeze firmly. Make sure to inspect your crimp. Now put your cable seal on and give it a good tug to make sure she's nice and tight. You should have your five wires now. Uh, one tip that I have is to kind of line up the cable seal crimps with each other so that the terminals are parallel to each other. It just makes it a whole lot easier for installing these jumper wires. Now the final step here is actually making the wires that power our accessories. These are going to go to whatever you want to power. In my case I'm going to have a fuel pump, I'm going to have auxiliary fans and some gauges and probably something else that I haven't thought of. What you're going to need for the final step is some 10 gauge wire, some loom, heat shrink, metro pack connectors, some tangless terminals, some tang terminals, wire seal plugs, and the blue cable seals. You're gonna cut some wire, five lengths, at five and a half inches long. You're gonna strip everything the same way that we stripped it before, and you have your cable seals there. So again, slip on your cable seal, 
go ahead and crimp everything make sure it's nice before you go crazy with the crimping just remember that each side of the cable has a different terminal on it one is a tang terminal like this one here and one is a tang less terminal and the reason that we're doing that is because the RTMR takes tang less terminals and the connectors, they take tang terminals. The tang is actually a little thing I'm rubbing on my finger there. It's the small lifted piece of metal on the terminal. So you're going to stick the tanged end into the connector. You're going to stick in a cable seal. And we're all done there. I chose to plug off the other terminal on the connector because I'm going to be grounding all my devices relatively close. Um, everything's going to be on the far end, on the opposite side end of the car. So I don't really want to run ground wires the whole length of my car. So once you have all that finished up, you can slip on the connector seal. It doesn't really matter which way it goes on it. It'll work either way. It doesn't have to be specific. Now that you have your five harnesses, you can slip on some braided loom. Slip on some heat shrink to make it look tidy and you can go ahead and start plugging it into the RTMR. Again, don't force anything in if it doesn't go in smoothly. You gotta turn it around and kinda mess with it a little bit until you hear that click. So there you have it. We're all finished with the wiring part. You can go ahead and start plugging in your relays. We're gonna be plugging these in upside down. So that pin 86 is going to the ground on the bus bar. Uh, there's many different sizes available. I chose the 30 amp ones. Now we can go ahead and start plugging in our fuses. This is all pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're confused on where the fuses go, they kind of correspond to the back of the system. Exactly how we made the jumper wires. These fuses are going to feed power to our relays. So now we're all finished setting up the RTMR. We can go ahead and install it into the car. Um, just make sure that you're using the correct bus bars. You want the power going in on the fuse side and the ground to your car on the relay side. Uh, I found a pretty cool device that kind of cleans everything up uh, in my whole car. It's got this cool little membrane to keep water out of all the connections and that's where all your fuses are going to go. They're very small and compact. It's called a Mighty Fuse or AMI Fuse and it just makes for a really clean setup. So the way that this box works is you have your main power line coming in from off right off the battery and uh, then it divides into different things. Of the 150 amp gonna go to my starter. I'm gonna throw an 80 amp here and that's gonna power the Busman RTMR fuse box. The fuse is gonna depend on how much power your RTMR is gonna pull. Uh, I calculated mine approximately to be 80 amps. So I'm gonna use an 80 amp fuse. The cool thing about these fuses is they're time delay. So if you get a little spike, uh, it's not gonna kick everything out right away. So the combination of these parts makes for a very clean install. Uh, it's, it's very minimal and you're not using up a whole bunch of space. You're not using a whole bunch of wire. Uh, you don't have uh, a board with tons of relays all over it. It's just all very compact and uh, it's efficient. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to see more things like this. Um, I do have another video idea coming up soon, so keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be restoring a dashboard with uh, a lot of custom work where I got gauges molded into the dash, but I'm not very happy with the uh, flocking and how it looks. So I'm going to try to fix that situation with some vinyl and uh, I'm going to show you guys how I did it and same thing as this kind of step-by-step -step guide and hopefully I can do it. Thanks guys again for watching. Bye.